Welcome to CRM7 training. In this training, we will talk you through and demonstrate how a CRM system can be customized and uh, actually used in a live environment in an implementation. So this session is all about giving you an overview of CRM and talking you through uh, some of the basic steps like logging into uh, the SAP GUI, how you do personalization and how you can for example search for a business partner. The usual copyright notice etc. so please do not uh, make any unauthorized copies of this. Well, moving on, uh, this whole course is going to cover 12 main topics. The first one is CRM overview, which we will address now, followed by account management, which talks about how you maintain customer, master the different roles and the customer life cycle. The third one is organizational management, which is all about setting up your CRM org structure, syncing it with the ECC org structure, the HR org structure, etc. Then um, one of the key master data elements of CRM which is the product master. We will look at in detail how do you configure a product, how do you deal with the set types and the attributes, how do you transfer a product from ECC to CRM and vice versa. After that, we'll move on to transaction processing, wherein we will look at a few sales and service transactions and their customizing, followed by activity management, partner processing, actions, pricing fundamentals, CRM billing, CRM middleware, and the technicalities of the web client UI. So, first, let's have a quick look at what CRM7 is all about. This is the architecture of SAP CRM7. CRM7 as a logical unit sits in the center and communicates with the interaction center with the web client channel, mobile handheld devices, with the NetWeaver portal, with supply chain management, with BI, and with the backend ERP system. So, looking at it uh, in another way, the diagram shows roughly how SAP CRM communicates with the ERP system the backend. So CRM has something called the CRM middleware uh, which kind of helps it communicate with the backend ERP system using something called BDocs which are business documents and we will be going in a little more detail in what BDocs are in a little while. On the ERP side corresponding to the R3 adapter there is a plugin that needs to be installed so that ERP can communicate with CRM. And for communicating with BI, which is Business Intelligence or BW, Business Warehouse, there is another adapter uh, within the CRM system. This is the web client user interface. The key thing is that the SAP CRM web client replaces the existing SAP GUI and the people centric user interface that CRM 5 and below used to offer. Now this is a standard and a uniform interface, an L shaped which all users of CRM use. That brings us to the question, what then is the role of the SAP GUI? Now for consultants and configurators, the SAP GUI still retains a lot of importance. 
as most of the customizing, the system monitoring, and the workflows and user roles and authorizations are done in SAP GUI. One of the questions often asked is what is customizing and how is it different from the actual programming. Now, customizing is, you can view it as a parameterization which basically means that it does not involve any code writing. All that is involved is um, setting the systems using the features provided and the options provided based on the business process that you are configuring. With that done, let us now look at the actual system and how a user actually logs in. Hello. Let us look at now um, how do you actually log in to the CRM system. So assuming everything is installed properly on your uh, computer, this is the kind of screen that you will see in the beginning. So you might have other systems as well along with the IDIS system. We are going to be using the standard IDIS system for this uh, training. So you highlight the system that you want to log in and press the login button. It takes you to a screen wherein you need to enter your predefined user ID and password. That's what I've done now. And what you see is this menu which is the standard SAP menu. In this menu, what you also have is some favorites. And favorites are typically used to store the most frequently used transactions. So you need to log on to the web client UI. I already have this favorite. So what I'm going to do is delete this and recreate it so that you know exactly how to do it. So highlight favorites, right click add other objects. What we are looking for is to add a BSP application and the BSP application is CRM underscore UI underscore frame and I will simply give it a description of web IC and the start page is default and I'm done. Now when I double click on this it will take me to the login page of the web client. So now you can see this is the main login screen for the web client. This is the web client URL. And it is possible to launch this URL straight away without going to the SAP GUI. I use the same user ID and password. select the log on button and as I mentioned before this message comes up which basically says you could log in directly using this URL. I click on the URL and this is the main screen the starting screen of the web IC. Now what you see on this screen are all different business roles 
A business role is something that allows a user to see the functionality that the user is supposed to do. For example, a service user might have a service pro business role which would allow him to create service orders, service tickets, service contracts, etc. A marketing professional might have a marketing pro role that would allow him to uh, create campaigns, um, target groups and execute the campaign for example. For most of this training we are going to be focused on the sales pro and the service pro roles. So I select the sales pro role and click. And what I see is the standard UI screen. See the L shaped structure here? So you have the navigation bar on the left hand side and you have the uh, typical personalization and the help buttons on the top. So let's have a look at some navigational settings that this offers. You go to personalize and these are the various personalization settings. So for example I choose personalize layout. This is the standard layout that I currently have. Uh, if I choose a different skin, say New Hope, oh, the layout has changed. This can be set for every user. A user can choose the layout that he uh, prefers. So let's just go back to the default. Save. Now let's try to see how I can personalize the navigation itself. I go to this button, click, and this is what you see. So in the navigation bar, I have got appointments, interaction log, tasks, and various other uh, elements. And I could choose to, if I, for example, don't lead, don't deal with leads, I can just take the leads bit out. But I want to see my emails in my inbox, so I'll get the emails in and I save it. And that's how I customize this navigation bar. So under the create segment of the navigation bar, I now have let us look at a few other navigational links so account management herein you can create delete or modify accounts accounts are basically your customers or contacts if it, for example your customer is a company then you will be dealing with the contact persons from that account and you have something called account hierarchies which basically means putting large customers who have several branches for example into a kind of hierarchy so the top might be the international head office followed by the regional head office followed by the actual city sales office or something so let us look at accounts This screen allows you to search for an account based on various parameters like created by, training, name, role, territory, etc. Some of the parameters are already visible here. So let us try to search for Megastore. Megastore is one of the customers in the IDIS system but I do not have the exact name so I'm going to use a wildcard entry star I type in star megastore hit the search button and I get a list of 66 accounts so there are quite a few megastores here their phone address, city, region, etc. 
Now, if I want to see some additional information about Mega Stores right on this screen without actually going into the individual customer, I have further personalization settings here. So I click on personalize and I get a range of options that allow me to see the available columns and the displayed columns so for example postal code here I do not wish to see the postal code I select postal code and remove it from the displayed column you can see it's still here that is because I have not saved it yet let me do that now once I save it the postal code has disappeared some other navigation links for example work list that shows me all the workflows for example if I need to approve a, a, a holiday for an employee or a purchase I get a workflow which I can see under the work list tab then I have the calendar tab which shows me if I have any activities Then I've got the reports, which I can go and look at any of the key reports that could either be uh, from BI or generated internally from CRM itself. So hopefully with this session now, you have got an idea of how to log into the web client and the SAP GUI as well as to uh, personalize the various settings and to navigate in the CRM web client UI.